the only Yakima News Team taking action for you. KIMA Action News starts now. Good evening, I'm Abigail Camillo. We are learning more about the case against the Yakima man accused of plotting the murder of his wife. The state says John Mutzenrader was a cheating spouse who roped in a co-worker to carry out his dirty deeds. While the defense argues adultery doesn't amount to murder, Bridget Chapman got a look at some of the evidence jurors could see in tonight's big story. An unhappy husband, a life insurance policy, and a gun. Prosecutors say it became a recipe for murder outside a Union Gap movie theater nearly two years ago. Before John Munson Raider's premeditated murder trial gets underway, there were two days of pretrial hearings showing some of the potential evidence. The state says money was a motive for murder. I think that it's very thin gruel. The state is going out, they're going out far on a branch. And I'm concerned that we have to come back and retry this case. The prosecutor pointed to a lengthy affair Munson Raider hid from his wife, as well as a bevy of other women he flirted with, as proof he wanted to find a way out of his marriage. He made a statement to the effect that he had said he didn't get along. Uh, he kissed her. At one point, they would meet for lunch or hang out. The defense argues being a bad husband doesn't make you a killer. When the state lists the birth dates, it's obvious they're trying to suggest that John is take, taking advantage of young, vulnerable women. Now, that may be true. And, and I'm sure Ms. Howard wants to protect the community. But try him for murder first. Let's get that over before we try him for these other things. A star witness for the state is Munson Raider's former co-worker, Juan Ibanez Cortez. He pleaded guilty last fall to a lesser charge for hiding the gun used to kill Cynthia Munson Raider. Ibanez Cortez told police Munson Raider offered him $20,000 to help kill his wife. Following this week's hearing, a judge will decide just what evidence the jury will see. In Yakima, Bridget Chapman, Action News. The trial has yet to begin. Both sides also worked out a jury questionnaire. We learned more about the man found dead in an empty West Valley home. The Yakima County coroner says 23-year-old Jose Silva was shot multiple times in the head and chest. He likely died Monday night and wasn't found till the next day. Investigators don't have a motive but say Silva had gang ties. The house where Silva's body was found has been empty for a couple weeks. His body was discovered by a worker trying to disconnect internet service. What we're really, really trying to nail down is, is this a place that these people might have been familiar with, or was this just a random place? They were desperate and looking for a place to make this, commit this crime and or, and or dump a body. The sheriff's office says people often take target practice near the house. Let's take a look at our weather headlines heading into the next 24 hours. Tonight, we'll likely see fog develop, and it will likely become more widespread and stick around a little longer. In fact, we may be talking about some areas of patchy freezing fog, which will make for some slick roadways out there. Winds are going to be light. We have that high pressure right over the top of us, and a lot of you will be stuck in the fog most of the day tomorrow. Unlike today, where those of us in Yakima, Sela, West Valley enjoyed sunshine, while other parts into Ellensburg and the Lower Valley stuck in the fog. I think that becomes more widespread tomorrow. It's going to be a little harder breaking out of it. But if we do, we'll enjoy some sun breaks in the afternoon. The rest of the Northwest will enjoy a dry, mild day with sunny conditions, except here in the valley areas where we'll be contending with that fog. Coming up, I'll let you know the problem spots and what you need to look out for in your full storm tracker forecast in just a few moments. Abigail, back to you. Thanks, Mike. Every city is required to file financial reports with the state. It's a way to see how they're spending your money. But KMA learned some of our local cities aren't keeping up, filing late reports or filing with bad information. Samina Engel asked Sunnyside the tough questions while Union Gap wasn't yet willing to offer the same transparency. Sunnyside's checkbook isn't pretty, and the Washington State Auditor's Office has noticed, calling out the city for filing late financial reports, or incomplete ones, not once, but three times, 2011, 2012, and 2013. I asked the city manager to explain this. The books were never properly closed. 
In other words, there were bills out there that were not paid properly. They made adjustments in the uh, in the books after the fact when they should never have made any uh, further uh, adjustments. Sunnyside City Manager Don Day says year-end budget balances were also carried over without making sure they were accurate. Day says the problem started before he got the job. These were all identified here. They should have been working on this back in 2011 and 2012. You're absolutely correct. I don't know why that happened. Why that happened to reports that show how your money gets spent. It would be nice to know, you know, where the money's going to. How are taxpayers supposed to be able to, you know, trust the city with their money when these reports are not being filed on time, when they're incomplete? They shouldn't. They should demand that we get it fixed. And we are. Day says there were years when there were discrepancies as big as one hundred thousand dollars. So that's like a hundred thousand dollars not accounted for. Right. That's kind of scary, isn't it? That's bad. Bad for taxpayers. It's bad for everybody. Potentially in more ways than one. There are other, you know, possible potential consequences to this. You know, the state can end up denying you grant funding. Mm -hmm. You know, Sunnyside mm -hmm. could end up with a poor bond rating. It may be tougher for you to get loans. I mean, doesn't that worry you? Oh, absolutely. Yes. While Don Day was in the hot seat, Union Gap is also highlighted for late filings over the same time span as Sunnyside. Yet their city manager was successful at dodging me all day. I'm trying to reach Rod Otterness again, please. As well as Union Gap's financial director. Karen, I am calling again about the state auditor's report. I never heard back from Union Gap. As for Sunnyside, Day says the city has fixed past reports and will be on time this year. In Sunnyside, Samina Angle, Action News. Sunnyside City Manager says the city has hired a new accountant last year to help with the reports and clean up past mistakes. State auditors have found an error in records filed by the Yakima County Sheriff's Office in 2013. A letter from the state to the Sheriff's Office says that more than 100 citations were voided without documented reasons. State policy requires deputies to write when and why a ticket was voided. This ensures that sheriffs aren't writing off tickets for the wrong reasons. The Sheriff's Office says they are taking steps to correct the problem from happening in the future. Now we know it's a, it's a big deal. It's something we have to give the same level of attention to. The Sheriff's Office says the tickets and questionnaire were never issued because they were outdated and never used. If you have a story you'd like us to look into, give us a call on our tip line. That number is 575-KIMA. You can also send an email to tips at kimatv.com. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Most of the shoreline at the reservoir behind Wanapum Dam reopened to the public today, but some areas remain off limits. The shore was closed last March after utility officials found a crack in the dam spillway and lowered the water level. Repairs have allowed the utility to raise the reservoir halfway to its normal level. The northern end of the reservoir will not reopen for several more months. Officials say access will be back to normal by the summer. Covering the Northwest, schools reopened today in Aberdeen after a storm caused serious flood damage this week. But the cleanup continues for many homeowners hit by a mudslide. 80 year old Gail Christner had to be rescued through the roof of her home. And I was sitting there, boom, it threw me out of the rocker, onto my head, on the floor. Another mudslide damaged homes in Hoquiam. Five o'clock in the morning. Uh, we heard the ground break loose, and it was like a freight train. I heard horrible, thunderous noise, and my bed started moving across the room. One sister had to break open a door to rescue the other. It's a comet that you'll only see once in your lifetime, and your best chance of seeing it starts tonight. Crystal Bowie learned what to look for. Comet Lovejoy has made its way closer to Earth, as close as the comet can be when it's 44 million miles away. Now, you won't even need an observatory like this one behind me to view Comet Lovejoy in the sky tonight. Scientists say you can view it with your naked eye. Although most comets are best seen in the early morning, Lovejoy will be the most obvious in the late evening, around 8 p.m. for the next two weeks. I've got this yellow balloon here, which represents the sun. My head represents the Earth, and this little squishy ball represents the comet. So tonight, it's close to the Earth, 
but notice that it's farther from the sun. So as it moves close to the sun, it's going to reflect that sunlight because the comet itself does not produce its, its own light. You can find Lovejoy in the southern part of the sky, about mid-height with a faintish glow. Start by finding the brightest star in Orion's belt, then look to the right. Unlike shooting stars, Lovejoy will gradually move across the universe. And if you have binoculars, Lovejoy will almost look like a cotton ball. You, if you are at a very dark site, it's going to look like a smudge. And in fact, you would look at it and you'd say to yourself, is that really something that I'm seeing? Or do I just have one of those floaters in my eye? Although it may appear faint in the distance, don't be fooled. The comet radiates much further than its core, made of gravel, dust, dry ice, and ammonia. This little object that's maybe smaller, for sure smaller than Yakima County in size, but when you look at it, what you see is bigger than the Earth. Although they're often referred to as dirty snowballs, Dr. Bruce Palmquist says studying comets can give us clues into the universe's past. In Ellensburg, Crystal Bowie, Action News. The comet gets its name from astronomer Terry Lovejoy, who discovered it. Comet Lovejoy is only expected to appear once every 10,000 years. You can get a look at the latest in agricultural products and technology this week at the 6th Animal Yakima Ag Expo. It's going on tomorrow and Friday at the Yakima Sun Dome. Farmers can attend classes and get certification credits at the show. Admission is $5. Coming up on Action News, it's supposed to show how much an appliance costs to run. Why that yellow tag might not always tell the full story.